Hello, everyone, and good evening. Welcome to the newest episode, a special edition episode of Adam's TV Podcast. Uh, I'm your host, Adam Samuel, and today is a special edition because we're joined by a previous Idol contestant. And I want to introduce her right now. She's the incredibly talented Amelia Eisenhower. How are you doing, Amelia? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. Amelia was on season 15. She did a pretty good run. Uh, she made it all the way to the top 24. We're going to be talking about her current music, what she's up to, maybe a little bit about this current season. And I'm also joined today by my co-host, Eric. Eric, how are you doing? Doing well, everybody. Um, so we have people on the waiting to watch, so that's cool. Um, this is pretty exciting. Yep. Let's see. Um, so I'm basically, I'm, this is all Adam's doing, mostly. So I'm going to let you have most of the floor for this episode. But um, yeah, it should be fun. It should be really fun. I just want to say before we get into our questions, for those who want to ask questions of their own, you could tweet them to me or Eric. All you have to do is use the hashtag, hashtag Adam's TV, Adam's TV podcast. We'll get through them. If you have anything you want to ask, we'll be more than happy to ask Amelia for it. So, uh, last... to Adam, not to me, by the way, because I'm, my Twitter is not open. <laughs> you can tweet them to me. So, um, like, like I said, we're joined by Amelia. I want to throw it over to you. So, a lot of people, the last time they saw you was on Idols. So could you just provide a little bit of an update? What have you been up to since? Well, since uh, you last saw me on Idol, well, first of all, I graduated high school. I did go back after Idol. And, like, a lot of people might be shocked by that. But I think it's one of the best things I ever did, honestly. I went back and I finished high school. And now I'm at Berkeley College of Music. And I'm super excited about that. And also... Last January, I released a pretty much all original record with my band, the Peruvian Farm Girls. So that's pretty dope. Um, you know, it took it took a long time. Like I was working on that album since before Idol. So to come back from Idol and to have all that new experience, I think really helped put the finishing touches on the work we already had. This is that's so incredible. Um, you also mentioned that you um you're now currently in college, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm in my first semester at Berkeley. So uh, I want to start going into some of the questions that we have for you. Um, so with, by the way, first of all, with the Peruvian Farm Girls, I love the song Lion's Mouth. It's one of the, it's one of my favorite songs, right? Yeah, we actually didn't write that one. That's by a really super cool band called Young Rebel Set. So if you like that song and like our version, you should totally check out theirs because it's amazing. Which songs off your album do you think people should, uh, which ones are your favorite that you want people to really check out? If I had to pick three, I would pick my song, Done, which is the first song on the album, our song, Do What Your Mother Told You, just because it's so much fun, and then we have a collaboration with Bobby Rush uh, on a song called Black Dog, and we made a video for it, actually. I had to sit through six hours of being painted for, because yeah. in the video, I'm, I'm Lady Liberty, so I had to sit through <laughs> six hours of being painted. Oh, God. And, it turned out so amazing. So I would. What was it like? What was it like to film that? Like to get to be to have your own music video with your name attached to it. Like that just has to be so exciting. It's honestly such a dream come true. You know, it's like one of those things that you daydream about when you're like eight and you see some really cool music video on YouTube, and like to know that I actually have, I actually get to do those things. Like it, it blows my mind sometimes. So um, coming off of your idol run, I just you were shown to have quite a few uh, friendships with some of the contestants. Are you still in touch with any of them? Yeah, I stay in touch with uh, quite a few of what we call the minor squad because um, at the time, me, Isaac, Tristan, Olivia, we were all minors. So we kind of got stuck in the same boat together. And so we always did like a lot of hanging out. And I have kept in pretty great touch with Tristan and Isaac. And I've seen them actually, I saw them a couple months back when they were visiting in Nashville. So that's pretty neat. Tristan kind of like dropped off the map a little bit. Like we never, she was always very into social media and then kind of just a little bit vanished. Is she like, what, do you know anything like what she's up to? As far as what she's up to, no. But I do know that she's like, she has, she's still performing. Uh, she's got a really fantastic band pack backing her up. Um, she's also been working on some music of her own. Uh, she is 
keeping on, keeping on, you know, doing everything the rest of us are still trying to do, you know? Yeah, I understand. So I want to break into, go into a little bit about your idol run. So you go into your audition. I, I rewatched it. You had the, uh, the, the sword, uh, <laughs> which was really cool. I was, I'm like, I'm an anime How fan, long were so you I'm really into that? it. So I wanted to ask, like, were you okay. planning to go into the, it with the uh, intention of it? No, actually, they were the ones who asked for the sword. So I did not intend to do that whatsoever. They asked for it, and so I brought it. I liked it. I mean, but it's how did they cool. know about the sword? Is my question. So uh, I remember whenever I got done with my very first initial audition, they interviewed you, and I had briefly mentioned having it, and I mean very, very briefly. And then, you know, I believe we got an email shortly before the Atlanta auditions happened, and they were like, hey, can you bring that? And we were like, <laughs> okay <laughs> yep so, i love so your intro package um when you go inside and then you go and you meet the judges and you uh you do your performance it's an any any lennox song uh there haven't been that many any lennox songs performed on idol that i could really think of what was your thought process of eventually choosing that song to audition with well initially any lennox is a legend you know and for somebody my age to come through to do somebody who a lot of kids in my generation don't know, it was a completely different thing. It was something that would make the, the listener go, I, I cannot believe I'm hearing this out of a 15 year old. Like, what is this? Because a lot of people go in there, sing Adele and the likes, but for somebody to go in and sing Annie Lennox, it really makes you stand out. I really appreciated that about your performance because you weren't like all the other people that came in. You came in and you were you were t something completely different that most people usually don't see. And to do a song like that is just, it's something that, it's variety. And we always ask for, we always talk about these shows and we always say that the most important part is going out and taking a risk. And I feel like that was taking a risk. So was that the only song you were thinking of doing? Like, were there other options? Like, how do those, how does choosing your audition song kind of work? Uh, well, here's the deal with shows like Idol. So basically, you are given a list of cleared songs. Yeah. And you can pick a song off that list. And from what I remember, the list was pretty long for that audition. And mom was looking through it, scrolling down, and she saw where there was an Annie Lennox song. And she goes, that's the one you should do. And so... I'm kind of always a one and done kind of person. Usually there's not really many other options. Kind of like uh, with my group round, we picked a song within the first five minutes, you know, it was just that and that's what we did. So I picked that and that's what I did. <laughs> On American Idol, the how group- short, How short was the shortest list that you were given? I'm just curious. About, I would say 20 songs, maybe. Like it was- And how many contestants? Um, this was during solos, I think. Okay. Before we get to solos, I want to ask, um, you had your group rounds and group rounds are always hyped up as this like really, uh, there's a lot of drama going on and I don't remember seeing that much or anything really going on with your group. What was it like? What? You didn't see anything with my group because there was no drama. Like there was nothing interesting for them to film. <laughs> So they, we went on our own, we went in a room and we practiced. And personally, I think that's one of the best performances I gave on the show is just working with that group. And like, I was the one who kind of made the arrangement of the song. Like I was like, this should do this here. And like, we were just having everybody's input and it was a really magical moment. Where do you usually get to rehearse your uh, group round auditions? Like, do you get to, is there like a set area or can you go to like to the hotel? Like kind of where do, yeah. where do you... So if I'm remembering correctly, you rehearsed basically in this little like, it was like a conference area. We found an empty conference room and that's where we did ours and we practiced like moves and all. A lot of people were practicing in the hallways, you know, wherever they could find that was semi-quiet, you know. We were lucky enough. I don't even know if we were supposed to be in there, but we just went in and nobody yelled at us. So, <laughs> Were people getting yelled at? Like, was there... People getting kicked out of places? I don't think so, but I also wouldn't know because most of the time I was just in that room and the doors were closed. So, but I okay. do remember there being quite a bit of drama just between people not agreeing on songs, between 
minors being in certain groups and the parents wigging out because they don't think their kids being shut <laughs> off enough. There was so much just drama going on. And so we just separated ourselves from it. If I remember correctly, there was also like some sickness going around because I remember the eventual Brent winner. Mono. Yeah, <laughs> Brent had mono. Was that going around? Because he was forced to do his round alone and because of it, no one else could, was allowed to like sing with him. Was that it, like... It was just him who had it, but he was still contagious which is why they did it that way. Did you ever uh, talk to Trent while you were on the run on the show? Did you ever, yeah. was he nice? Yeah. Was he like, uh... no, he's very nice, very down to earth. I think he's a very genuine person. He's very, he's just sweet and down to earth. Mm-hmm. He seems it. So I, I can attest that he seems like it when I met him two weeks ago as well. So yeah, he seems pretty nice. Um, mm-hmm. Anywho. Um, <laughs> Going on, you you make it through uh, group aud- group rounds. You go to the solo rounds. I don't think we saw your solo performance, did we? No, no, my solo performance was not aired. What was what was your performance that you did? I did "Time of My Life" by uh, David Cook. Was there violin? Uh, no, I went up there by myself and I just did it. I'm sure it was pretty good. I mean, you made I it think through. It was- one of my better performances actually and it's kind of a shame they didn't show it but you know i'm i don't know what goals they had in mind you know did 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 you sing the line magic rainbow yeah did you crack up no good for you david can't no. do that i really like that song i love no, that like, song i was trying to sing the song like practicing and i actually was like trying not to cry because i've heard that song since I was little, like, since he won my sister's senior year in high school. I think it was one of the tracks on her dance, like, CD, because they got a mix from the DJ who did their dance, and it was on there. And so I've been listening to it for such a long time, and, you know, now I was in that moment, and it really was the time of my life. It was the time to stand out and do this. It was a really, like, emotional moment for me. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, he basically never sings that song anymore. Um, he actually sang it like earlier this year for some reason. I mean, it's clearly a great song. I mean, he, but it, it's a, it wasn't matched for him, but I'm sure it would have been, it's a better match for people not like him. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he'd never really, him and that song didn't mesh too well, but it's definitely a good song. Yeah. So, Continuing forward, I, I wanted to ask a little bit about the judges with you because we never really saw that many critiques from the judges specifically about you. So, like, were you what what kind of uh, reactions were you getting from the judges? Like, what were they? Were you getting like very positive, or were they telling you anything like you need to work on, or what? Like, what was the feel for that that the judges were giving you? Mainly very positive. Um, there was the one critique from Harry in my initial audition about my tone. I was so nervous whenever I went up and did that which is why my tone was just out the window. And so from that moment on, I was just telling myself, you cannot go up there and be a nervous wreck anymore because you have to control it. And so I feel like that helped. Um, But other than that, I can't really think of off the top of my head any other critiques that they made. Most of my reactions from my performances were positive. I mean, it seems so. You did, were you, were you guys placed into the rooms that year? Yes, we did the rooms. Room were you room. were you uh, freaking out when you got put in the rooms? Yes, and simply because I got separated from my group of minor friends. Oh. So they were all in one room that got told yes, and I was looking around at the room that <laughs> I was in, and quite frankly, I was panicking <laughs> because I was looking around at some of these people, and I was like, oh. <laughs> like, because I, I, I hadn't seen any of their singing, so I didn't know them. And, like, you just don't know. And I had seen all my other friends sing, so I was really nervous. That seems like it would be the worst part of Hollywood Week, in my mind. Those rooms where you rooms just... Are the, the rooms and lines of ten. How... You we didn't... Oh, go on, I'm sorry, Eric. Go on. At least you didn't have to deal with the Huff. You know what that uh, is, right? Yeah, Huff's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what did what did you do for your uh, your uh, lines of ten song? We didn't really get to see that. I don't think so. So, my lines of ten was a very like it was kind of still a blur moment. Like whenever I came out of my initial audition, I could not remember anything. 
that had <laughs> transpired in the room. So Lines of Tin is still, like, I know the song I did. I did Barton Hollow by the Civil Wars, and I just did the uh, percussion line on the violin and sang at the same time. And it worked. <laughs> I mean, I, I wish we could have seen more from you because you were such, like, a you were so unique in this cast that we were given and i just i it's such a shame that we didn't get to see more from you because i do think you are truly incredibly talented and i also think that you also picked a lot of great songs which is a shame that none of them were shown <laughs> so well, a couple of them were but but you know yeah so you're placed in the room you eventually end up getting through uh what was that like feeling when they come in did they try to freak did they try to like uh like uh give you the oh yeah, they, they you know the, the first feel to us was like you know, in this industry, you're going to be told a lot of no's before you get told a yes. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> but that's not your problem today. You guys are going through. And we were like, eh. <laughs> And, like, I actually started crying because, like, of the just the stress of it all. Like, I started sobbing. I was like, what? Because, like, here's the deal. With Idol in general, I did it for fun. I didn't really intend to, like... <laughs> go as far as I did it was <laughs> kind of like oh that okay <laughs> yeah um no and actually funny story mom signed me up for it and she was like you have an audition and so I was like okay <laughs> <laughs> okay <sighs> I, I just were you were you with your parents when you're in the room I mean I don't you don't kind of see them but I always I always found that a little weird with that they would separate the minors from like the adults. Uh, uh, my, I believe you were in the room, weren't you, Mom? When? Uh, for whenever they did the rooms at the end of Hollywood Week. No. Okay, Mom. No, she was not in the room. It was no, just contestants. Because, yeah, because we were standing down in the lobby, and you walked by and looked at me like, "Oh my God, I'm done." Freaking <laughs> <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was pretty wigged. You pretty waked? I'm barreling down the stairs. We were like, okay, we're, we're good. <laughs> I can't even imagine. But thankfully, Hollywood Week ends up working out for you. You get sent th straight through to uh, the Green Mile round, which is held yeah. at the House which of Blues. the second fake out of the season. <laughs> yeah, but before we get to that, you uh, you get to this venue and you're, you get to do one solo performance in front of a huge crowd and you end up choosing New York state of mind. What was the thought process of like uh, going to that song? And was there like a, a short list for you to choose from? There was a fairly short list to choose from, from that one too, but I have such a love for Billy Joel. Um, I think his music, honestly, if it's sticking around this long, that says something. So that's kind of like what I look for in artists really, because if your music can stick around, for years and years and years and still be timeless. Like that's to me, the mark of a true artist. And so something about New York state of mind, like I saw it and it just spoke to me. I was like, that's the one that's what I need to do. And it's my favorite performance. That one's the one I'm proudest of. My favorite performance. We'll get to a little later. It was uh, your duet, but um, just with uh, you decide to use the violin for this performance. Uh, were you kind of suggested by the producers to do it or did you kind of decide that you were going to do it on your own? I did that on my own because to me, like, I understand the competition focuses mainly on vocals, but as me as an artist, the violin is a major part of who I am. That's how I started in music. It, it's, it's me. And furthermore, like, the musicality of Billy Joel like I couldn't go up there and just sing it and not use it so it was just I, it was a god instinct thing like no I need to do this you did a pretty good job I I mean it is one of my favorite performances of that you did on Idol but was it uh stressful at all because at this point it's like months later Hollywood week has already ended a while ago and you're brought back and there's like a lot of people it seems like at this venue when you're performing like uh were you oh, was, was the nerves even worse no, big crowds don't bother me. In fact, it makes me better. I hate performing for intimate crowds. I could not stand being just in front of the three judges. That's what wakes me out the worst. The minute there's an audience, I'm on. Like, that is my thing. Because my heart's really in the performance. And 
the bigger the audience to me, like just the better I am at being myself and throwing a party for everybody in the room, you know? Totally. I'm, I, I just, it seems like I would be freaking out, honestly, in those moments, like just to know, <laughs> but I would be freaking out even more so after you finish the performance, because then you're put into another room. I think it was like the day after, and this is the green mile. This is when they walk you down one at a time. What was, yep. what was the mood in that room? <laughs> well, the first thing I remember about the room is the room was very cold. Like, it was cold in there, and so that accentuated the fact that I was already trembling because I was nervous. And the room was just very quiet. You know, I went up there, I sat down, I had no idea what they were going to say. And I think, honestly, of the three judges, Harry Connick was my biggest fan. So <laughs> he, he, if I remember correctly, they talked about the joy and the presence that I had on stage. And... I mean, like, I was just kind of, like, petrified, petrified <laughs> just sitting there, nodding, like, okay. And then they, they told me I was through, and I was like, oh, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I, it was just such, such a moment of shock for me, because, again, I entered it not really expecting anything out of it. So just that moment, I was, yeah, I was just really taken aback, and I was shocked, and like, because I... I honestly didn't know if I would make it because there were so many fantastic performances. Were you surprised by anyone that was cut that round? There were, yeah, I was surprised by a few, but the, I mean, I don't know what the producers have in mind. You know, nobody can read their minds. So. I understand. Um, With not until JLo talks and says, I'm predicting these two in the finale. Then you can read their minds. <laughs> yeah, when they say uh, who's going to be in the finale, that's, uh, that's a little telling. But um, you you get the yes. You're through to the top 24. And I think if I was in your shoes, this would be the hardest point because now you have to keep it a secret because the show has to air. So, like, it must have been so difficult to, like, hold those feelings in to, like, not go screaming, I'm in the top 24. Like, what was returning home with that yes like? Well, um, my immediate friends and family knew and like it was just so empowering for me because one of the bigger issues like that I feel like I've always faced is like I just I want to be recognized for my work. And so to have that big, you know, badge of achievement, you know, I, I was just so proud of how far I'd come. And I have to say, like the hardest part, though, I watching the initial auditions and like whenever they first started airing the first auditions and me not being in the first episode, <laughs> like, cause I was waiting, waiting to see my audition and I wasn't there. And I was like, this is, a bad sign. this is a bad sign. You know, it was whenever I actually started watching it that I realized kind of like where things were going. Cause they, they give a lot of context clues whenever they actually do the editing such as the fact that they didn't show all of my performances, you know? They didn't show, they don't usually show, except for like a couple, do they show every single performance. I thought going into the top 24 that you honestly had a shot. Um, but we get to the top 24 and you perform, uh, I think it was, uh, it was the uh, Ella Black song. It was, uh, Eric, it was, what about? Wake Me Up. Wake me up. So uh, what was it like, uh, going up going out and performing that song because now all this hype is behind you uh you've you've everyone knows and it's on the live stage you're basically given the full extent of the idol like uh potential of like what you're allowed to do on stage what was it like um to me that performance was just absolutely magic not a thing went wrong with it from what i like i just walked up there and i nailed it you know i i knew i did the best i could possibly do which is why when I was eliminated, I was just, I was okay with it because I knew I did the best I possibly could. And to me, that performance was so much fun because I really just got to let loose, not only vocally, but just as a performer. Like I remember actually walking around on the stage and that's not something I do often because usually I've got an instrument and you know, you're kind of chained to the microphone when you've got an instrument. And I was really confident in my own arrangement of the song. I thought it was original. And I just, I really feel like I did the best that I could have done at the time. 
I thought you, I still, even after you performed, I still thought you did have a really good shot. I mean, there were some, you had one of the standout performances of the night, but I think the highlight for you of the top 24 round was when you had your duet with Kelly Pickler, which was Suds in the Bucket. And I still watch it every so often because it's just so good. So what was the process like of being introduced to Kelly? Like, were you told ahead of time, you're going to be paired with a former yeah. contestant? And uh, we were told ahead of time who you're going to be compared with. And, you know, at first, I absolutely, like, I was confused because <laughs> I don't really consider myself a country artist, which is why whenever they paired me with Kelly, who's, like, very country, I was like, what? And then furthermore, the song, Suds in the Bucket, I was like, what? <laughs> so I was like, okay, um, this this we'll make this work and um the way they introduced us like we were just in a back room at a dance studio i think and <laughs> i went through a door and there she was was she and nice in person was, oh yes yeah, she's oh my gosh she's so nice <laughs> i love her um so i wanted to ask how much time do you usually have to rehearse with her like you walk through uh, the door you got, meet her we got maybe 30 minutes tops to do the song with her was that like that's that's seems a little low to you that's short yeah you didn't get a dress rehearsal or like um we anything? had a rehearsal where i went up there stood on the stage that i remember correctly and somebody <laughs> held the shirt up that she was going to wear for lighting i don't i don't remember if she actually was on stage rehearsing it with me but i think we did do an actual like on stage rehearsal but it only we only did like two run throughs Okay. They've, they've got a schedule. They've got to keep up. So mm -hmm. they can't linger too long on things like that. I thought it was really good, honestly. Like, really good. But um, one of the things that, like you, like you mentioned before, they were kind of, I feel like the Idol producers saw you as like a question mark. Like, you're not an alternative. You're not like a pop. They kind of wanted to fit you in. They're like, okay, maybe we could stick you in right here like as a country artist. And I felt like that was kind of the vibe that I was getting from it. I don't mm -hmm. know because the that you your run didn't go much further but i feel like that was kind of the role they hoped for you and you kind of didn't want to go that you're like no i'm gonna do my thing and i feel like that was a little bit that that was why they were kind of like maybe we don't because they also had if i remember there was also emily brooke that season and i felt like they yeah. wanted a country girl and they kind of maybe they were the, the vibe i was getting was that they were gonna hoping that you would be that country girl uh i wouldn't say that uh, not necessarily. They did try to pigeonhole me into that, but keep in mind that Tristan was also a country artist. So they kind of had a really, you know, good country girl in her. And not to mention, she had an absolutely fantastic story. People loved her. So mm -hmm. I don't know if I would say that was it. But I did again, like, I really can't tell you what their thought processes were. Uh, but I will say, like, when it comes to my top 24 performance, I really do feel like that I made a song choice mistake in singing Wake Me Up because Nick Fratiani did it the previous season, and I should have thought of that. But that that's, I think, partially where I messed up. But I did do the best that I possibly could with the situation. It's, it's a shame because I, I really thought you had a lot more to offer to the season. But um, I, w I just want to ask, so that eventually, you are eventually cut in the top 24, but of your entire, entire Idol experience, like what would you say were your, was your favorite part of it? My favorite part was the performance of New York State of Mind in the Dolby, because I mean, who, how many people do you know that can say, I went up and I sang and played at the Dolby Theater? Like, that's just, it blows my mind, you know? <laughs> and like performing for that massive audience in the Dolby theater, it's, you know. <laughs> um, I just have some other questions. I just want to ask about your idol run. Um, had you stuck around, what other songs were you, did you have in mind to perform? To be honest, that was another mistake I made. I didn't plan far ahead. We kind of just went round by round. And I think the contestants who do well on shows like this plan ahead. And so if I would ever do anything like this again, I would definitely be sure to plan ahead. Do you have any ideas, like, though, if you could have, if you were allowed any songs to choose uh, to perform on the Idol stage, like, what 
what songs would have been your go-to? Like you have, mm. you can choose from any song at all. Keeping in mind that's not an actual theme week. You can't ever, they would never do something as open as, you can pick whatever hell you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Honestly, a song that resonates with me, and we were talking about it earlier, Boston by Augustana. I really feel like I could have done a very like good, just soulful performance of me with a piano just doing that, you know? That is another thing because you play the violin, but you also play like a bunch of other instruments. And I, I kind of wish that you, we got the opportunity to hear you do something like on the piano because I think you're such a good piano player that Boston covers, yeah. it's sublime. But um, Eric mentioned themes. So if you got to pick some themes for American Idol, what themes would you have wanted on the show? Themes. Like country know. week, uh, Elton John week, uh, Disco. Okay, if I could have picked a theme week, Nina Simone. Ooh, Nina Simone. That's hard. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Uh, feeling good. Yeah, yeah, no, feeling good is my song, dude. Mm. Uh, it, it's honestly like you couldn't pick worse than the Idol songbook that they did your later in your season. Oh, that was an awful. So that, that, that was that on. was them trolling everybody. That was that was the most amazingly bad theme week they could have possibly picked. <laughs> yeah. So I want to bring the uh, I want to pivot the conversation a little and ask about uh, the current season. So I want to ask Amelia: Are are you a fan of any particular contestants this season? I did really like Dominique. Now I know Dominique did not make it into the top fourteen, but I really did believe that he was amazing. His initial audition, I was like, "Oof!" Yeah, <laughs> I, I really enjoyed his voice. Um, are you a fan of this, uh, this the new panel, or did you like the original one that you had? I really liked the original one that I had because they knew each other. Like the banter was a lot more friendly. Like, it was just, it was funnier because they all knew each other, you know, if that makes any sense at all. Are you a fan of Katy Perry's? Um, do you... I, I, I like Katy Perry's music. I do. Um, I do listen to some firework every now and then. <laughs> I've been saying how many times on this season now. Oh, that's, that's a song I feel contestants should never want to do on the show. For, no, for the list of them. But I say okay. anything that any of the judges did, it should be on the no-fly the no list. Thing that, the no fly don't list. do that. <laughs> No, the the other thing about Firework is it reminds me of the movie The Interview. <laughs> and I can't think of anything. So I'm just... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> no, that, that's just what comes to mind. I think of Firework now. <laughs> oh, God. But... <laughs> Oof. So, um... <laughs> I still haven't seen the interview, but clearly I need to because this scene is clearly amazing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Oh, God. We're going to watch the interview. Okay. <laughs> Again. So I'm sorry. We got off track. <laughs> we got off track. Um, I wanted to ask uh, I just have some other questions. Uh, if you got to pick some people to be on this panel, if you got to craft Amelia Eisenhower's own American Idol panel, who would you want out on it? Okay, so. Dead or alive? Dead or alive. Okay, okay. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me think. Oh, gosh. Mom, we are not putting John Mayer on this panel. <laughs> 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 no. Um, okay, so I would put. Oh, gosh. Oh, this is hard. I would probably put, like, Miles Davis on it just for the instrumental aspect because you got to have an instrumentalist in there somewhere because i feel like if you don't that's you don't know what you're talking about with certain aspects of music because you know you have contestants coming in playing instruments you need to have at least one instrumentalist in the in the crew um i would put nina simone simply because her commentary would be hilarious <laughs> she was just she was she was a pistol so I would, she would be like worse than Simon. And worse than Simon? Watch. So her commentary would be harsh. Um, <laughs> and Whoa. then third person. Hmm. 
I would put Adele because she's probably she's my favorite popular vocalist. Number one? Uh, pretty much, yeah. I have a lot of respect for Adele. What's your favorite song of hers? My favorite song of hers, the classic Rolling in the Deep. Oh, uh, have you covered that song ever? Um, I have done it once upon a time. I was younger, though. She has a lot of new songs that kind of like they're they're released and then never heard from again. Like they yeah. the runs kind of the songs kind of come and then they just leave as quickly as they came. Like, well, uh, actually, no, they usually last about two months and then they leave. All right, I'm two. sorry, two months. <laughs> but so, so uh, Amelia, there might be some contestants on this season who might find their way onto this podcast, and I want to ask: Do you have any advice for these people who are beginning their idol run? My key number one ultimate piece of advice is no matter what they try to tell you, do not lose track of who you are because they will try and fit you into a mold and you're just going to come out confused. And that's what happened to me. And I struggled for a very long time. So you, you just need to keep sight of who you are and do you, you know, don't give up. Even if they threaten you, like, well, if you don't do this, I, I don't, I guess you're off. Like, d don't give up, you know, be yourself. Did anyone actually say that to you? No, but it's, <laughs> just making sure because that would be horrible even the last time they asked you to bring cosplay it was like the fourth time they asked you to bring cosplay and we were like no no and i'm still very glad that i did not do that so it would have gotten you airtime and you know even if it was a contributor and me being and me being eliminated i'm still very happy that i didn't do that you came off your uh idol experience do you kind of have uh Good thoughts towards it or bad thoughts to it? Like Absolutely what a Absolutely good thoughts. Absolutely good thoughts. I would not be near the performer I am today. I would not have the knowledge I have. And furthermore, it connected me with people. I wouldn't really know Tristan and Isaac on the level that I do, you know. I wouldn't I wouldn't know you. <laughs> so if it wasn't for Idol, there would be a lot of friendships and connections missed. Amelia, do you have any interest in going on any other shows by any chance? Um there's always the voice, the X Factor. Well, no, not the X Factor. Factor. Uh, America's there's Got Talent. Factor, but that's there are... a conversation. <laughs> I story. I actually have tried out for America's Got Talent before, but uh, it's never worked. It's out. never worked out. But that's a that's a variety show, so it's a little bit different. But um, honestly, it's a lot different. I don't think I would do that. But if you know, if ever there was a point where I was sitting around, and wasn't really doing anything, yeah, I'd go throw my hat in the ring. Amelia, I'm, you should go on another show. Come on, The Voice, you could, you could, you could win. Well, The Voice wouldn't really make it. Oh, I would actually. <laughs> I mean, there's The Voice and America's Got Talent. I mean. I think America's America Got Talent's better overall. You, you could do the family band. Everyone could uh, be in it. You could be the Peruvian farm girls. Yeah. Yeah, bands never won America's Got Talent, so that would be. I mean. Has has have bands ever gotten anywhere close to like the top finale? I don't think so, but I know a couple bands that should have. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, I just want to ask. Uh, you do uh, live streams now. I hear you do them uh, every so often. Could you tell me a little bit about that? All right. Yeah. So if you guys are wanting to hear my new original music, wanting to keep up kind of like with what I'm doing, with how my life's going, I do a live stream every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because I go to school in Boston. But yeah, no, if you have a song requested, you might want to hear me sing, hop on there and you can comment it and I will do my best. <laughs> I, I, just try to, I always try to fill covers. I just want to say right after this, I'm probably going to submit a cover. I got to figure out a good song, though. All right. I'll come up with a good one or two. Um, or five. So, <laughs> or five. I, I have a lot of good song suggestions. I love to talk about music uh, by all means. Uh, I wanted to ask, uh, your mother mentioned this to me earlier. You have a new line of clothing or merch that you're... Uh, okay, selling? so here's the deal with that. I'm making some merchandise specifically for my fans who follow my live streams. It's going to be... The hashtag sad but rad live stream. <laughs> the hashtag sad stuff. but rad live stream. Yeah, I'm making some super dope clothing and stuff that you guys can win just by sharing the live stream with your friends. 
or I think it will be available on the website as well. But it's mainly for the live stream folks. Or whoever wants it. Or for whoever wants it. If I find it in the thrift shop, though, I'm going to be mad. I would kind of want one of those shirts. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, any any other upcoming projects you want to uh, touch on before we uh, uh, end it? Well, okay. So one thing, and it's coming up very, very soon. Um, I guess I should throw it in here just in case anybody from Nashville is listening. <laughs> Me and my sister will be singing the national anthem on Saturday for the Nashville Sounds game. So if you want to hear that. Death of Walk. Thank is that on TV? Is that going to be like Bob live stream somewhere? They're on the TV. Um, um, I don't know. Um, I'm thinking it will probably on, be on the local national channels. Local national channels. There we go. That's pretty exciting. Any uh, any nerves? That's a that's a pretty. Is that the biggest crowd you've ever done? No. <laughs> yeah, it will be. Will it? Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have to see if we can top what. How many was at the Pickler show? We did well over seven thousand. Over seven thousand. Well yeah. over. Yeah. So, so we'll see. You ended up uh, performing again with Kelly Pickler, right? Yeah, yeah. In the August, um, August of that same year. Did you reach out to her, or did she reach out to you, or like? Actually, it was just kind of a happenstance thing. We got booked as the opener, and we saw she was the main act, and it's like, hey. We're your opener for that night. She was like, "Really?" And yeah, it just it just kind of fell together. Did you do uh, "Suds in the Bucket" again? Uh, no. We did a song of hers, and then we duetted uh, "Red High Heels." Ooh, it sounds like it's it sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Anyway, I just want to say thank you to all our listeners who have joined us. I want to say thank you to Eric and Amelia. Uh, my I name really is have more than me, but yeah. <laughs> My name is Adam Samuel. You could follow find me on Twitter at Adam Soapbox. Amelia, you could find you where? You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all pretty much under Amelia Eisenhower. Eric, how about you? Eric underscore Asher on Twitter, YouTube, thoughts.ericasher.com. I just posted a completely unrelated thing about Apple products today that has nothing to do with any of this, but... <laughs> If you're curious about what I think Apple needs to improve on with their software, which I doubt that you are, but if you are, <laughs> it's up there. So, <laughs> any uh, any final thoughts, guys, before we uh, call it a night? Um, don't forget to pet your dogs. Don't forget to pet your dogs. That's very important. Also, don't forget to watch my live stream and pet your dogs at the same time. <laughs> Put some love in your virtual tip jar. Oh, yeah. I have a virtual tip jar, too, if any of you want to throw a little love in the bucket. <laughs> it goes a long way for helping Amelia, and uh, she deserves it. So I just want to say thank you to everyone who's joined us. Uh, Eric and I will be back on Tuesday uh, to recap the next week of American Idol. It's uh, the second part of uh, Top 24 week. So you can look forward to us then. Until then, guys, thanks so much. Bye.